Now, the Democratic Republic of Congo has detected its third Ebola case in less than a month. The case has been detected in the border city of Goma. This has prompted the World Health Organization to warn that the disease could spread further quickly. Meanwhile, the second patient detected with Ebola died early morning on Wednesday. The first victim, a priest, had also died shortly after being taken to the hospital. There are now raised fears that Ebola could spread to neighboring nations of Rwanda and Uganda. Rwandan authorities today closed the border between Goma and its nearest town of Jesenyi as a precautionary measure. All people other than Congolese citizens are leaving Rwanda. World Health Organization's Director General for Emergency Response, Ibrahima Soche, Paul, and UN Emergency Response Coordinator, David Gressley, is giving an update on the Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Let's cut across live and listen in. Um, so that's counter, it's counterproductive because it, it interferes with that. And then secondly, people will find another way. There's, there are, are uh, more remote areas where if you can't go across the main border, you can find a different way. And when, you, when that starts to happen, then the ability to, to check to see if people are symptomatic or not becomes that much more difficult. So it's actually quite counterproductive and not in the interest of either country concerned. So uh, we certainly uh, advise against that very strongly. And the recent declaration of a public health emergency of international concern specifically stated that. And WHO said that they were going to watch that very carefully. Uh, and, and, and advise if any violations of those recommendations uh, were to happen. So that's what I can tell you as of now regarding the border crossing in Goma. But over to you, Margaret. Uh, and if, just to add, it's not so much a guideline, but it's part of the agreement when we declared the public health emergency of international concern. One of the things that happens then is all the member states agree to abide by the recommendations made by the Emergency Committee. And the Emergency Committee made it absolutely clear that uh, a top-line recommendation was that borders would not, should not be closed and that travel and trade should not be affected. And as Mr. Gresley said, these particular borders are really important for trade. Uh, the, the countries have masses masses of trade across those borders, hundreds of thousands of people cross, trucks, all sorts of things going on. So closure of the border causes a great disruption to the countries involved, but also exactly as Mr. Gressy said, this sends an epidemic underground. And we've seen this throughout history. If you look at the history of the Black Plague, that's exactly what happened as well. If you start making people terrified, you, you close things down, they run away, they hide, and they spread disease. Uh, you had another question, which is about community. And it's a good question and a tough question because there's no such thing as just one concept community. Every different group is different. Butembo's not Beni, Beni's not Goma. The bits of Butem Beni are, are different from each other. So in each place we go, we have to listen it's not so much about educating a community, it's about listening to what they think of us. And that takes time. And it also takes responding to what they say. It's not just about listening and, and, and writing it down, but thinking about what you can really take action on and show that you are a genuine partner, that you are genuinely making them own uh, the, the work that you are doing. And sometimes in an emergency, that gets lost in the speed and the, the, the speed and the desire to shut something down. The time to listen and let the community own can be problematic. And, and it is one reason, though, why we're still here.